possible. Now, for another point of view about this, if you Google information about vaping, you'll uh, wind up sooner or later at vaping.org. We have the man behind vaping.org, the president of the American Vaping Association, a lawyer from New Jersey, Greg Conway. Welcome to Axios, Greg. Appreciate it very much. How did, how did you get vaping.org? Well, we had to pay for it, but not too much. How much? A uh, few grand. Uh, you got a good deal. Uh, Axios costs more than that, so uh, <laughs> uh, you got a good deal. So you spend 60 to 80 hours a week doing what? I run the American Vaping Association. We are a nonprofit 501c4. We do activity around the country trying to keep vaping legally available, affordable, accessible to adult smokers. Uh, and we do a lot of work in the media as well. So pretty much everywhere that there is a vaping issue, we try to have some role to play. So uh, backstage, the FDA commissioner, who's our next guest, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. Gottlieb had a very uh, smart idea for a question. Uh, for you, uh, Dr. Gottlieb would be a good journalist, among other things. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask you his question, which is, what level of teen vaping is okay with you? What level would it have to reach for you to change your posture? So I look at it the same way that the FDA does. You have something that they call the population level health assessment, where you not only look at the users of the product, the adult users, what are they doing, but then you look at youth and how many of them are transitioning to cigarette smoking, how many of them are only experimenting versus using 20 plus days of the month. So the acceptable level, it depends. Are you talking about youth that are using one to two days a month, which was the case several years ago, or are we talking about increasingly the numbers where you have teens habitually using? Those are two entirely different matters. All right, so when we were uh, talking on the phone, you told me that you quit using watermelon. So you got to unpack that statement for me. Sure. So in 2009, these products hit the market. FDA, under former leadership, tried to ban them, declare them to be drugs. It turned out to be the best advertising this industry could have because it made millions of, a smoke, millions of smokers aware that the products existed. Unfortunately, the products were junk. So 2009, I imported a product from China, tried to quit, failed. It was a tobacco flavor. All it did was remind me, you know, a tobacco cigarette would taste really good right now. So you were an early adopter. I was and immediately saw that this industry, this technology was under attack. And meanwhile, cigarettes, the products killing 400, 500,000 people each year, remained legally available. And you had government agencies, state governments trying to just ban the alternatives. It didn't make sense to me. And so what is your vaping routine now? I use um, mostly when I'm traveling. This is an Enjoy product. It's an excellent tank system, pre-filled. Uh, it's sold at Walgreens across the country. Uh, small plug for Enjoy on C-SPAN, never hurts. Uh, they are an independent company. What flavor is that? This is Tropical Twist, so it has some pineapple to it. So mostly I use fruits, which is the vast majority of adult vapors, actually, and that's something that doesn't get told enough. The vast, vast majority are using non-tobacco flavors, and it is the non-tobacco flavors that so many ex-smokers say, that is the reason why I was able to quit, because once I had mango, once I had watermelon, a tobacco cigarette no longer tasted good after a week or two. But uh, do you dispute or is there any doubt that that also adds to the view, adds to the appeal for middle school and high schoolers? No doubt. Flavors are a reason why people use the products. But, yeah, if, you're, but if, you're, if you're tweeting at Ash, <laughs> Axios, hashtag Axios360, uh, like you've got a tweet there, and then here's the other half. That is not the only reason why youth use the products. When the federal government asks youth, why have you vaped? The actual number one and number two reasons are because it is less harmful than smoking and because it is less harmful to others around me. So the idea that a silver bullet, ignoring the hurt that this would do, grave damage to adult smokers and ex-smokers if you got rid of all flavors tomorrow, uh, if youth are using these products for nicotine, many will continue to use the products regardless of whether there are flavors available. So uh, you're off to Oklahoma after this to brief their legislature? Or? Oklahoma Senate uh, Health Committee. Okay. And you were kind to share with me the PowerPoint that you put together uh, for them, uh, 22 pages. And there's one page in that 22-page PowerPoint that's going to get you in trouble. What's that? You should know. What do you think it is? I don't criticize Commissioner Gottlieb in my 22 pages. What is it? Flavors are critically important. Oh, yeah. That's going to cause trouble. 
No, flavors are the number one issue. If you do not have flavors, you do not have adults switching to these products. Tobacco or flavors. Or kids buying them. Tobacco flavors are awful. You do not have harm reduction with these products. You can just get rid of the entire category if you're not going to have flavors available. What is the biggest media either misperception or misconstruction of vaping? Well, I'll ignore flavors because we went down that road. But the fact that we, we know that millions of adult ex-smokers have switched to these products. So many news articles simply say we don't know the effect. You can look at CDC data of the past month e-cigarette users. You have about 4.5 million that are ex-smokers using the products. And prior surveys have found that about 85% of those have quit in the last five years. So those are very largely people who have used these products to quit. And 2.9 million ex-smokers are daily users. And these are people who have quit smoking with vaping. And meanwhile, you have in England, Stoptober begins in 10 days. You have the NHS, the National Health Service, putting commercials on TV saying vaping is at least 95% less harmful than smoking. If you are an adult smoker, you should switch. Unfortunately, we have not reached that level of dialogue in the United States, and the media, in most cases, doesn't help us get there. What is the most legitimate criticism of the industry? That it does not have its act together. The vast majority, about 50, 60 percent of this industry is small and medium-sized businesses. Though unfortunately, when the media writes about it, they, they cover the products sold in convenience stores. Jewel, Mark 10 by Altria, Views by Reynolds. That is actually only a, sl a, sil a sliver rather, of the market. The, the, the 10,000 vape shops all across this country that do an excellent job of keeping youth out, they are small, medium-sized business people. They don't have experience in forming giant lobbying groups and convincing Congress members to work with them or getting together and setting real standards. So we need some assistance from the FDA. We're hoping a non-hostile FDA so we can keep this industry around, grow it, and not just hand over it in its, in its entirety to large tobacco companies, which is the path we're on right now. So we're about to hear from the FDA Commissioner, Dr. Scott Gottlieb. What do you agree with and disagree with in his approach to e-cigarettes? So I think back, last night there was an article that Commissioner Gottlieb wrote five years ago for Forbes, and he talked about how the Tobacco Control Act, the bill passed in 2009 by Congress, that it was supposed to give a route, give a pathway for less harmful tobacco and nicotine products to come to market. And so I see that in his writing. When he spoke last year uh, at the FDA, July 26th of last year, and said, smokers smoke for the nicotine, but the nicotine is not the major cause of the death and disease that is caused primarily by inhaling burning smoke. So that kind of rhetoric, that kind of language is great. But in terms of what I disagree with him on, I think that his, the way that he is presenting this issue uh, ignores a lot of the adult smokers that have benefited from these products. And I also think that the agency under Commissioner Gottlieb's um, uh, experience, his leadership, he has not done enough to actually make sure FDA is complying with the law. There is a product called ICOS, a heat not burn tobacco product that has helped several million smokers quit worldwide. FDA has missed their statutory deadline by about five months to approve that product. If FDA can't do its job with one PMTA, one pre-market tobacco product application, how are they going to do it when they have 3,000, 30,000 in, in three or four years? All right, we'll hear from the commissioner in a moment, but just to take note that the commissioner does uh, point to uh, the vaping as an off-ramp for adult uh, smokers. You sent me a couple of graphics. Uh, tell me the story that this tells. Tell, us, tell our guests uh, what this tells you. This was a survey of about 69,000 e-cigarette users done by Dr. Constantinos Farsalinos. It was submitted to the FDA as part of their docket on the role flavors play in helping adults get off cigarettes and the role they, they play possibly in youth beginning to use. And you see here only around 10 percent, less than 10 percent of adult vapors use tobacco. The vast majority are using fruits or, or desserts. Uh, and so the experience that I have 
that was watermelon that helped me quit, and there was no chance I would ever quit if I only had tobacco, that is an experience shared by the vast, vast majority of vapors. So please don't think of flavors as simply just some reason to get out there to young people. Adults love these products, uh, and it helps them get off of deadly cigarettes. All right, Greg Conley, we finish with one fun thing. You're off to Oklahoma. You might have a little free time before you testify. What's on your to-do list? I have a lot of work to do, but in terms of fun, I think I'm going to go out in Oklahoma and shoot things. It has been a long time since I've gone to a firing range, and it seems like Oklahoma, the state with the highest adult vaping uh, rate in the country, that is a good state to go and do some shooting. Greg Conley, thanks for joining Axios. Thank Appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. Thank you for uh, coming.